Greetings, this is Jerry Revere with the Avaya Technology Strategy and Development Team, TSND. This video provides several methods to identify the resources available in a Linux server instance to validate if the server can be upgraded or needs to be migrated to a new platform. A short tutorial is given on the hard drive partitioning to avoid possible implementation mistakes. This video will take a look at the Avaya Diagnostic Server resource requirements when an existing SAL Secure Access Link Gateway is in place to determine if it can be upgraded or will a migration be needed to be considered. It is very important to ask more than the question of how much free hard disk space do you have available on your SAL gateway. This video should make the reason very clear. Please know that this is one of the series of Avaya Mentor videos on the Avaya Diagnostic Server, release 2.0. There are three main items that are considered resources that need to be considered, those being RAM, memory, CPU cores, and hard disk space and its partitioning. We will look at the output of a few Linux commands that will provide the data needed to make the upgrade or migration determination apparent. I will also demonstrate where it has been noted in several trials that the Red Hat installer can lead you astray for a proper ADS Linux installation. The table shows the minimum and strongly recommended configurations for RAM, CPU, and hard drive space allocation. Much of this video will focus on the hard disk and hard disk partitioning. Looking at the right columns of the table, the directories of slash opt and slash var in the single partition configuration are both under the slash or root partition. The rightmost columns of the table show two things that need to be noted. Looking at the different partitions column, the slash opt directory is a subdirectory of the slash partition and the slash var noted there is a separately mounted partition. The first portion of this video will look at a server that has about 260 gigabyte of hard drive and of that disk 243 of it is free but the ADS SLA Mon application would not install. I have entered the Linux command of df -h to have the hard drive configuration displayed. The -h option produces the output in a human readable format in gigabytes. As you can see, the area called out there appears to be 41 gigabytes plus 202 gig of disk space, which total together is about 20 gig more than what ADS 2.0 needs. Or is it? The upper rectangle is showing the slash partition with 41 gig of free hard drive space, and the lower rectangle is displaying the slash home partition. The slash home partition was not mentioned in the table previously shown and that 202 gig of free space will not be used to install the SLA Mon application. There will be enough space to upgrade the SAL gateway to 2.3, however. If SLA Mon is desired, the migration route would need to be followed or install SLA Mon on a separate server with SAL being installed on the server that we're looking at. We will now look at how this could happen during the Linux install and how to overcome this for new installs that might be made. What we are looking at here is a portion of the Red Hat Linux installer. I have clicked the checkbox that allows the installer to open the partition configuration tool. Going into that tool you see an output similar to the df-h that was previously seen. What is being pointed out is that the installer has the pre-configured slash home partition to have about 250 gig of the total 300 gig as shown in the lower line describing the physical volume. This Red Hat default configuration would be very normal for a standard server installation as the user directories would be provisioned in the slash home partition. However, ADS needs a different partition arrangement. What I'm about to show you now are the two ways to use that disk space so ADS 2.0 could be installed successfully. If this was a new server install, unfortunately this will not do anything for the current SAL server. If the migration to a new Linux server is to be done, this next section should eliminate a mistake and to allow for a smooth ADS install and migration of the original SAL data to the new server. The first step is to delete the slash home partition so you have that hard drive space to work with. I have selected the partition and pressed the delete button. 
Addressing the confirmation dialog, the space is available now for reassignment. Note this free space highlighted. Selecting the volume group label of VG underscore test ADS and pressing the Create button opens a Create dialog where I have selected the LVM logical volume radio button. Pressing the Create button opens the dialog to create a new logical volume. I have selected a mount point of slash bar which will create the separately mounted volume noted earlier. Renaming it to LV underscore VAR so it will be easier to reference, I have accepted the total space available and pressed OK. Highlighted now is the reassigned hard drive space and the server will have a separately mounted slash VAR partition if I were to complete the installation in the manner just shown. Instead of completing the install, I have deleted the logical volume just configured to show the other acceptable method for an ADS install. The disk space is now free to use, so I have selected the slash or root partition and pressed the edit button. The edit dialog is presented and you can see that the size is 51 200 megabytes or 51 gigabytes. Observe the note about the max size. Using that information, I have overtyped the previous entry with the maximum number and pressed the OK button. Note that the total amount of hard drive space is configured within the slash root partition. Pressing the next button, I get a format dialog and, and the dialog to write the changes to disk. After the formatting is complete and the balance of the install can now be done. The install has completed and I have opened a terminal session to the Linux server that was just installed. I have issued the df-h command four times. The yellow areas show that the three directories are all the same size. They all have the same available free space and the red highlights show that they are all directories on the slash root partition. Going to a different server to show a slightly different view, please note that the slash partition has more than enough space to install the executable binaries with 78 gig of free disk space. However, the separately mounted slash var partition only has 173 gig free. The LSA mon installer will provide an extra question to be addressed that states that the disk space is not the required amount. If a situation similar to this one is present, it would be acceptable to install. The important thing to be aware of is that the lesser amount of disk space in a slash var partition would reduce the number of days of data that the SLA MON server would retain. I have been speaking up till now on understanding the hard disk partitioning and configuration. I will now demonstrate what I personally find the most accurate way to identify if the server memory and processor meets the minimum requirements. Going back to the CLI of the first server we looked at, I will demonstrate three commands that will provide the number of processor cores, the processor clock frequency, and the amount of memory installed on the platform. The commands I am showing are in every Red Hat and CentOS Linux implementation. Those are the only versions of Linux that are supported by ADS 2.0. In the Linux CLI, the first command string is cat slash proc slash CPU info and pressing enter on this server you will receive eight pages of output. Not to worry however as I will point out the data of interest. The pages scroll by very fast but the processor frequency is displayed on each of the pages. Assuming for a minute that the server has only one processor the highlighted line tells us the processor is an Intel Xeon 2.27 gigahertz processor. To determine how many processor cores are available, you will use a modified version of the last command with the addition of slash grep looking for a specific set of text. That text being the word processor highlighted on the screen is a complete command plus is the output showing that there are eight processor cores labeled 0 through 7. The last command to identify the amount of available memory in the server is cat slash proc slash mem info. The command produces a page of output so you need to scroll back up the screen to the first line of that output. The output is displayed in kilobytes. Moving your decimal point to the left you can see that the server we're looking at has 12 gigabytes of available RAM. If you were to calculate the 12 gigabytes into kilobytes you will see that this number shown is about 8 megabytes short of the 12 gigabyte total. 
That memory shortage is for a few reserved bytes in the kernel binary code. The number is roughly right to determine the installed memory in the system. There's one other command that could be run to identify the amount of available memory, and that is the command called free. I personally prefer the verbose output of the previous command shown, however. In closing, the server we just identified the memory and processor on is a physical server. You may have Linux implemented in a virtual machine. If the instance does not have enough processor cores or memory, most virtual machines have an interface to expand those two resources very easily. If your hard drive meets the specifications, you should validate if the memory or processor can be expanded in your specific implementation. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya.mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.